Welcome again to our video module on statics. Here we are finishing up equivalent systems. Now thus far we've had a great time looking at the work that we've done thus far and kind of creating ways that we can make things simpler. We've looked at vectors, we've looked at transmissibility, covered force couples, looked at how force can act at a distance, and finally how to simplify large uh, systems of forces and torques. Now I want you to look at something. As we, um, we have a problem and um, the problem is, is right here. Our problem is that these, this force and this torque, they're, they're not a, being applied perpendicular to each other. They have really are completely independent of one another. So what we want to do is we want to find a way to kind of create something so that these are uh, the force and the torque can be thought of with one type of, um, of language. So let's take a look. Let's imagine for a moment that we have a, um, let's, let's, let's imagine that we have a force and then we also have a torque and um, they're going to be in, they're going to be in different directions is, is right here, but the concept's the same. They're just in some angle with each other. And they might even be in three dimensions. One might be straight towards, or one might be partially out of the screen or into the screen. We're looking at all of these in 2D, but they're equally true in 3D. I want to figure out a way so that um, these are these are lined up or they're in the same uh, axis or they're, they're in the same plane or they're 90 degrees, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my torques and I'm going to remember a rule that I have. I remember that if I add, if I separate the torque into two components, that I can add those two components, we'll call this, this, um, this torque A and this torque B, that I can add torque A and torque B and that gives my total torque. Now the cool thing is, is I can make those any torques I want. I can put them in any direction as long as when I add them, you put the vectors end to end and they go from start to finish. As long as that's true, we're good. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the direction of this force. I'm going to define that as one of my axes. So now I know that I at least want one torque in the same direction as the force. Okay, I do that and then I create it in such a way that the second torque goes in this direction. If I wanted to make an equivalent system, I could say that that is the same as torque A. I'm going to try and keep the sense of these. Torque B. All right, so now we've created this torque. And finally, all we're going to do is um, here's our force. Okay, great, great. So we've done something here. We've, we've now put everything so that uh, we're perpendicular. We know that the torque in the same direction as the force, this torque, but I'm not going to say it's really that much simpler. All we've really done is taken one torque and turned it into two. However, what we can now do is let's, this is all acting at the center of mass, right? I mean, the torques can act anywhere, but the force is acting at the center of mass. Let's move the force so that when it acts, it creates torque B. All right, we're going to change the force so that when it acts, it creates force B. So we're going to move it to some radius out here so that when it acts, we're going to take that same force and when it acts, it creates torque B. And in addition, we also are going to keep our um, this torque, torque A. So what we have here is we've been able to reduce a force acting at an angle to a torque to one force, one torque acting in the same direction at some radius to the, um, to the center. We call this axis right here, we call that many times you'll see it is R. 
that is that's the axis and we, there's also a corresponding pitch the pitch is the ratio of torque A to F and the name for this type of system is a wrench so in this case uh, the direction that these are going that is the axis of the wrench and the ratio here of torque A to F is called the pitch of the wrench. This leads to um, rule number seven and that is the rule of a wrench and fortunately it's nice and easy we have a force and a torque equals um, a force plus there we go force plus a torque plus well, well let, let's keep our same uh, torque A torque B and they're also equivalent to let's put that uh, center of mass they're also equivalent to a force acting at a distance plus torque A acting at a distance and the name of this is called a wrench this allows us to um, work with situations like in number six where we combine the torques and the forces this allows us to work with those and put them into other forms that may help us as we do the problems and it is called a wrench go ahead and take some time look over what I did mathematically see if you can make some sense of it this is kind of tricky and um, we'll have an opportunity to see these used in action in the future but I wanted to at least take a moment to introduce it to you and show you the seventh rule of equivalent systems look forward to seeing you next time as we get a chance to use these rules to start tackling more adventurous things in statics I look forward to seeing you then.